Good evening everyone, how you all doing? Welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. Hope you're all okay. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers this week and my comments, uh, all my likes. I really do appreciate it. I really don't. I'm sorry, I'm talking to you. I'm really aware. I've changed my setup again and the light is it's it's on my glasses. I can I'm gonna ignore it because it's attached so if I mess with the light I'm gonna the camera's gonna go all over the place so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it hope it doesn't put you off when you're watching the video right um this week I'd like to look at it, it's a program I've done quite a few stories on and it's Britain's Darkest Taboos um this actually is probably one of the first ones I watched from this program um and when i back went went back i thought i remember that one it was the first one i watched and it's just it it's such a sad story like they all are but oh it's just such a shame um like i say it's from britain's darkest taboos and it's about a girl called michaela hall and she was born on the 7th of feb 1983 and it's in leeds um West Yorkshire. Now, Michaela's an only child, <clears throat> and there's just her mum, who's called Julie Sahin. Sahin? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, now, Julie and Michaela, as she was growing up and even got to her teenage years, all so close, really, really close. They didn't even seem, from what I heard, they didn't even seem that um, normal teenage putting of heads between them. They, everyone in, you know, on the program just says they were just really really close really close like best friends um now there was no man on the scene uh, uh michaela's dad's not mentioned at all so it was just the two of them and i think that's what made them strong it made them really really close um now michaela really pretty girl um very outgoing energetic popular you know she was just a lovely looking girl um but what she wanted so she really wanted a family so very young Michaela did get married now again not a lot said about it on the program just that it doesn't work out there's no kids from it or anything and she gets divorced um now, it, it, it said on there, it did hit her really hard, even though it wasn't a particularly long marriage, because of not having a male in her life, you know, growing up. Everyone says she just sounded like, she, she just wanted that family unit. She just, you know, that 2.4 husband and wife. You know, she just wanted that for herself. Um, now, Michaela and her mum, Julie, they go on a lot of holidays together. Like I say, they're really close. And their favourite, I think it's their favourite destination, not even one of them, it's their favourite destination was Turkey. <clears throat> and they used to go quite a lot, I think a couple of times a year. Now, while they were there um, on one particular holiday, Julie meets um, a lovely Turkish guy. He's on the programme called Mehmet Sahin, 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 I think. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, but they get on like a house on fire. Michaela really likes him, and eventually they get married, and he moves to England to move in with Michaela and Julie. And he just slots in very easily, you know, into the love. Considering they were so close, you know, for it, it would have took a lot, like a, a really nice man, to have kind of slotted in there, and he did. You know, they made up a really nice uni. So, the, no, it's the three of them. And the three of them continue to go to Turkey. Obviously, he's Turkish, so he's going to go home and visit his family. Um, and it's where Michaela and Julie love going. So, they continue to holiday there quite a lot. Um, it's on one of these holidays that Michaela meets an, a man by the name of Ensar Gol. This is in 2007. Um, and Michaela falls for him hook, line and sink on the holiday. Yep, hook, line and sink, hook, line and sinker. Finish sentence. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, she falls for him. Um, 
and she wants to, you know, the holiday ends, you know, as a normal holiday romance would. And she's gritty when she gets back home and she wants to go back and see. Now, Julia Mamet, not overly keen on Ensar Gull. And his name's Ensar Gull. So G O L is his last name. Um, but yeah, Julia Mamet, not, not a fan. Not a fan of him at all. Um, but Michaela, she's really headstrong. And I think she she fell for it, as you would on a, you know, on a holiday romance. And it's all like, you've got no responsibilities. You've got no work or, you know, so it's, it's just new and it's lovely. And that's what happened. Um, so when she gets back, straight away she saves up and she goes back to see him again. Julie's really not happy about this. She's just got a really bad feeling about this guy. But when Michaela comes home from this busy, she's pregnant. She's over the moon, but everyone's just a little bit like, oh, this isn't good. You know, twice basically seeing the guy on two holidays and she's she's come home pregnant. Um, you know, she's, she's really happy, like I said. She just wants this happy family unit. Um, and for the next two years, or two years, two years, she, she tries to get my met, my met, sorry, Ensa, sorry. She tries to get Ensa to come to the UK and get him a visa and stuff. But for two years, she carries on visiting him every couple of months. Now, in 2008, she has a baby girl. 2009... She has a baby boy. That week, you know, there's no names mentioned on the show. There's no reference, um, really, to the children. You hear about the little girl, at, you know, towards the end of the programme, but there's no real reference to them. So that's all. I've, that's all the information I've got. In 2008, 2009, little girl, little boy. That's it. Um, I put them. What they do say, she's an amazing mum. She's a really, really good mum. Um, now, don't forget, he's still in Turkey. But because she's had two of his children, obviously continuing to visit him, bringing the kids to see him, this is costing a lot of money. Um, he starts to become controlling from another country. He tells her what she can wear, where she can go. And it's basically, you've got more children you know, you, you'll do as you're told, you know, and again, like I say, Julie, my mate, just then, oh, they're just n not happy about the whole situation, as you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be happy about it. Um, now, in 2010, Michaela, she's 26 now, and she really wants Ensa to move to the UK, and she keeps fighting to get in this visa. Um... Now, Ensar was supposed to do, um, it's like a national service in Turkey that you have to, you have to do. And, you know, he didn't want to do it at all. But the only way he could, he literally skipped out in not wanting to do this national service. Um, now, when she was trying to get his visa, it was said that until he finished this stint in the military... There's no way he was getting a visa approved. So that was a constant course of, you know, aggravation for Michaela. You know, she she wants this, she wants him there. And she thinks that if he moves to the UK and they live as a family, you know, he'll realise there's nothing to be jealous of. You know, she she loves him. Um, so she's she's really trying, she's really trying, but in the meantime. And bearing in mind, she's looking after his two children. He doesn't send any money for them. Um, she's getting out there to visit him every couple of months. As well as all that, she's sending him things like new trainers, new clothes. She pays to get his teeth done and whitened. You know, he he's basically single over there and doesn't send a penny. She's looking after their son and daughter, working, having to get the money to go and see him, and also sending him these 
quite expensive gifts. And all he was kind of giving her back was just heartache. You know, he was cheating on her. Um, it was said he was living a completely single life over there. But really mistreating her at the same time. It's so confusing for me to tell this story because I can't, I can't imagine how strong you must feel for somebody to allow, you know, them to control you like that from another country. You know, I just... It's very hard to get your head around and she must have felt that strongly for him. And he said, you know, she wanted them all together that that much. That I suppose she wasn't seeing it. She wasn't, maybe she was seeing, you know, he cares for me. I, I, I don't know. On one of the times she goes over there to visit him though, with the children, watching the class, Julie goes with her. Um, and so... When they get there, Julie babysits for the kids and um, and Sarah and Michaela go out. It's supposed to be a nice time, you know, time for them as a couple. But when they get back, they're having a massive argument. It's not said what it's over, but they're having this massive argument when they get back. And Julie obviously hears the ruckus and, and walks out of the bedroom and, you know, she's like, stop. And it's said that he turned Michaela tried to stop him, I suppose, going for Julie. And he turns and slaps her. He slaps Michaela. Now, obviously, she was going over there a lot on her own. So that's the only reference that's said about even maybe the start of the, the, the violent side. But it could possibly have been going on for a while when she was visiting without her mum. Obviously, Julie's livid, absolutely livid over this, you know. She hasn't brought her daughter up to accept behaviours like that. They get home and Michaela still, she still goes all out to try and get inside this visa. I think, I think she just thinks the fairy tale, fairy tale will click into place if she can just get into the UK. I think that's just how it said she was very stubborn and headstrong and obviously the blinkers were on and all she could say was that end result and if she could just get there everything could be okay um but while she's trying to get this visa together Enzo just finished it just finishes with our phones with one on we're finished no explanation nothing completely devastates her don't forget she's working hard to get him this visa she's uh, she's sending all this money you know and he just finishes it What's that? Now, Michaela, obviously, very upset, heartbroken, maybe not even thinking straight. She goes over to Turkey, but not to see Enza. She goes to see an ex-boyfriend, um, you know, that she'd met on one of her holidays over there. Instead of my friends, and it's insane, right, obviously, ex-boyfriend, so it's kind of, they've obviously stayed in touch, and she goes over there, and obviously, they sleep together. Um, She gets home, though, and, oh, she's instantly regretted it, like, from the minute, it was, it was, it was a rebound, that's all it was, you know, the minute it was done, it was said, there was just instant regret, she was devastated, so she just, it made her realise even more she wants Enza to be in the UK. She wants him there. She wants her kid's father to be with them. Um, and she gets in touch with him and they get back together. Like, like nothing's happened. Like it was very confusing to everyone around. Like he didn't explain why he'd finished it. Not, no reference to it at all. It just, they took, you took off where the, you know, where they let, took off. What's that say? Oh, it's there where they left off. You know what I mean? If they carries on with the relationship. Oh my god. It's really late. Don't stay up this late, people. Um so in March 2011, um, much to everyone, everyone's kind of dismay. Michaela goes to Turkey and marries Enzar in a in a in a traditional 
Muslim ceremony. Julie refuses to go. Michaela's so upset that her mum's not there to give her away, but Julie can't do it. She can't approve the relationship at all. Not everything she's seen, she just can't, even for Michaela. You know, she's doing it for Michaela, really. She's just, she's trying to get through to her. Um, Mamet, they're trying to get through to her. This, this is not good for you. But they, you know, they get married. And very shortly after that, when um, Michaela gets home, Enza, somehow, it must have been in the same time, maybe, he finds out about the fella she slept with. It's not said how he finds out. I don't think it was a friend of his, but maybe it's a very small town and he finds out. Obviously, he's livid. You know, this controlling guy who's claiming that, you know, she's his and nobody else's, isn't really taking into account that he finished with her. He's just... Absolutely. I'm just so angry. Um, he, he literally goes crazy. He's really verbally abusive to her on the phone. She's still pulling up with it. She's obviously apologising, you know. She's in the wrong, obviously. Doesn't matter that he finished with her. Um, but in August 2011, Enzar's visa's approved. And he flies to England the next day. It's... Now you can imagine how angry he is anyway. And now he's going to get to see her. Um, but he gets there. And the whole family. Michaela. Enzo. The two children. Move in with Julie and Mamet. Now this for Michaela would have been a dream come true. And Julie. You know. the the This special bond between... Mother and daughter, best friends. Now they can live as this perfect family. But this is all in Michaela's mind. Because this is not, it's not what the situation actually is. Enzo's, um, he's just angry from the minute he gets there. He's resentful from the minute he gets there. He he doesn't want to be there at all. Part of me is like, why did, he, why did he come anyway? You know, I'd... I think he knew all along what he was going to do. I think he, I think he knew. Um, so, obviously, like I say, he still, he hasn't got over it, and he speaks to Mehmet. Um, and he, obviously, Mehmet talks on the show, and he says he was talking about what, I, you know, um, what he wanted to do to her. He wanted to hurt her. He did. But Mehmet just thought, he took it as two blokes talking. His actual words was, he was bullshitting, actual words. Um, you know, and he really took it with a pinch of salt. He just thought, young lad, you know, obviously the age guy, he just thought, he's, he's ranting, just let him do it. You know, she 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 did what she did. You know, he had finished with her. You know, we'll get over it. Um, now, they try and all try and get along, but after it lasts two weeks, two weeks, and it's it it just hasn't worked. It hasn't worked at all. And Enzo, after two weeks, he's on his way to the airport. Michaela phones him. <clears throat> this is all. This is just the worst. It's just you could have just took the phone out of hand. She phones him when he's on his way to the airport, and she begs him, begs him to come back. We can be a family, you know. Obviously, I'm apologising, whatever she felt she needed to apologise for. And he comes back. Um, now, when he comes back, he starts bragging. He starts bragging to his family that he's going to kill her. This is what he's doing on Facebook. He's going to kill her. And you just thought, why didn't you just let him go? Um, on the 3rd of September 2011, so he's been in the country. It doesn't even say when it was in August, it just says August 2011. Two weeks later, now this is only the 3rd of September, so 
I presume it's not even a month, not even a month, okay? He's been, since he came to the UK, not even a month, he'd met a girl at the pub and he was sleeping with her. Not even a month here in this country with his wife and his two children and he's already cheating on her. Um, now on the 3rd of September 2011, quite early evening, he goes and meets this woman and he sleeps with her on that evening. Um, he then goes to see Mehmet at work again. And again, my mate used the word, I thought he was bullshitting, I thought he was. Again, he was, he actually asked this time who would look after the children if anything happened to Julie and Michaela. Julie, the mom, because my mate's had a hatred from, for her right from the get-go really, because he struggled with her, the control of Michaela. Now, Julie wasn't controlling Michaela, she was like the good, she was like the angel on Michaela's shoulder, if you like, saying no. And he didn't like that. He didn't like that at all. He felt that was, you know, a disrespect to him. You know, she shouldn't be listening to anybody else. Um, so, yeah, he's threatening Julie, he's threatening Michaela, who's going to look after his kids. And I'm a met, when you... Oh, I might not be putting it across, but when you watch the programme, he seems like such a nice guy. And he seems very, very laid back. A very chilled guy who wouldn't say that seriously because you can imagine it would never cross his mind so i suppose he never thought he would follow through with anything it was just ranting um so he's been to see he's been with the girl he's been to see my mate and then he goes home now michael is in bed with their three-year-old daughter asleep Julie is downstairs chatting to one of her friends. And so walks into the house. He walks past Julie and her friend into the kitchen. Takes a knife. Walks past them again. Obviously not showing the knife, but walks past them again. It goes up the stairs. Now, I did say that the three-year-old little girl was in the same bed. And he starts stabbing Michaela. He actually stabs her 40 times. She didn't stand a chance. She didn't get off the bed. She she didn't get off the bed. He didn't hurt his daughter, but she was there. And of course, hearing the screams and, you know, knowing something's very, very wrong, uh, Julie and her friend come running up the stairs. Now, the friend did get stabbed three times, but she ran. She managed to get away. She managed to get away from him. But all his hatred was saved for Julie. And it's said that the reason he walked past her and went to obviously kill Michaela first, because that's what he was going out to do, he wanted it to be Michaela first so Julie would see that and know that her daughter was dying. Um... And he he just vented everything out of Julie and he ended up stabbing her 50 times. And it said, in the reconstruction it said, the crime scene, um, it was obviously at the top of the stairs. She tried to get down the stairs and the main um, stabbings were at the bottom of the stairs. It was supposed to be a, a horrific, horrific crime scene. Um, Oh, and it's just awful. And then, on the programme, you see CCTV footage of him holding the little girl. He's took the little girl out of the house, sorry. Didn't leave her. He took her out. And he's walking her down the high street. Um, and you see him. He's got her in one arm and he's got the knife in his other hand. And he goes back to where Mehmet's working. And... Oh, it's so sad. You see him put the little girl on her feet and run towards Mama. And she tries to run back to him. She does run back to him. She's obviously very confused, very upset. And she stands there for a second not knowing what to do. And then you see her run to what you know is Mama. Oh, it's awful. Then, obviously, at a different point of the CCTV, you see him strutting around with the knife again on the phone. 
and it said he's on the phone to his family going, I told you I'd do it. Told you. Told you I'd do it. Um, and he keeps referring to himself as the wolf. The wolf done it. So proud of himself. He really was. Um, you then say, the place is slightly off camera, but you see him go down and obviously go to the floor. Um, and yeah, not one bit of remorse. He was actually, when he was being questioned, was referring to the blood on his jeans and how expensive his jeans were. She probably bought them for him. How expensive they were and that it, how hard it's going to be to get the blood off them. They said he could have been talking about that he'd robbed a penny sweet from the shop. There was just nothing in him for the crime scene he'd just left behind. You know, my mate, I, it, it kind of cuts to that bit and then cuts back to him on the programme and he's just utter devastation. And, you know, he refers to Julie as his only reason to leave. You know, she was my, she was my, you know, she was everything to him. And it is when he says, my only reason to leave, I just thought, oh, such a shame, such a shame. He doesn't refer to the children again. So I, I don't know, I don't know who, who has now adopted the children, who's looking after the children. Um, you know, thanks to that man, they were orphaned, technically. Um, you know, so there's no, no more reference to them. So I, I, I presume they would have just wanted to keep their identity away from everything. And, you know, what you, you would. Um, so in May 2012, there's actually a picture of him that the press have took as he's been taken in for the trial. And he's got the biggest grin on his face. And he said, they're the teeth she bought him. They were they were his, they were the teeth she bought him. Do you know what I thought was brilliant though? If you do watch the programme, the actor they've used for the reconstruction, this is going to sound awful against the actor, but his teeth were up crooked. And I just thought, brilliant. Because if ever he watches that, his teeth apparently were very important to him. And he did have these... Complete mouth the pearly whites that must have cost her a fortune. And to use that actor to portray him, I just thought, I don't know, maybe that was just me and the, you know, the actor in it had nothing to do. But I just thought, what a good touch. You know, that was what was most important to him. But that was just my own opinion. Um, when he gave uh, his, he actually, you, a lot of them don't testify, do they? But he did. Tried to save his self-defence. Julie came for him. They had um, a, a, a guy come on, a professional come on, um, on the stand just basically saying that the way the crime scene was laid out, there's no way his version of events could have had it ever happened. You know, how the work out blood splatter and things like that. It, it could never have happened and the jury didn't buy it either. But while he was testifying, he was laughing. He got his lawyer's pen and started do an impression of what he did. The judge had to tell him to give the pen back. Um, no ring off, said he never loved her. Oh. Oh. You know, that really upset the people in in the programme. You could say that really upset because they knew how much she loved him. Um, but he got, he was obviously found guilty. Um, you, there's no way you couldn't, self-defence really. Um, he was given life, 36 years for each murder, obviously Michaela's and, Ju uh, Michaela's and Julie's, and also, uh, and further 11 years, I think it was, for the attempted murder of the friend. Um, so yeah, I, oh, it's just not enough, is it? It's not enough for what he did, but it's, it's. I suppose, given a lot of the British stories that I do, you know, it's a longer sentence than some some of these awful people get. But it just never seems long enough. I just imagine if it was in America, that would have been life. I, I would say so. I would say so if I was doing it. Uh, and my had had been... Well, I don't know. I don't know. I can't say. But, yes, 36 years. 
And that was from Britain's Darkest Taboos. If you don't want to have a look, the CCTV footage is just chilling. It really is. Um, you can probably see it on Lauren if you can't see the program, but yeah, that was the story of Michaela Hall. Um, actually, on Britain's Darkest Taboos, it's uh, a holiday romance, romance gone tragically wrong, I believe, or a holiday romance that leads in double murder. It's it's one, of, but it's Britain's Darkest Taboos if you do want to have a look. And yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry I've kind of gone off a couple of times. I just it's quite late. I don't use stay up this late. <laughs> but um yeah, rough night with the kids, won't even bore you with it. So thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Um if you've got any comments or you'd like to put a like, um, or subscribe, I'd really, really appreciate that. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me again. Thank you again. Bye-bye.